Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Uh, back on again, and um, and uh, I think this morning during my lunch break, I was um, I checked out this article here, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Alright, let me uh, kill some of these windows real quick. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Um, this morning during my lunch break, I checked out this, uh, this, uh, what I just now noticed is a rather old article, uh, but, but surprisingly it's still effective for what I'm getting after here, but, uh, this is, um, uh, indie game design do's and don'ts. I'm not a indie game designer, it's not, it's not my trade or anything, for those that don't know, um, as of a few days ago, I decided to try my hand at designing my own game. Um, it's a it's a text based it's a text based RPG, but you got to start somewhere. So just started browsing around a little bit for uh, game design tips, and this one came up. I got as far as maybe like a couple two the first two or three entries, and I decided immediately that I I got to save this for a video. I got to save it for a video. So. Um, the guy's name is Ed McMillan, and apparently he's, uh, I guess uh, he was one of the creators of, uh, Super Meat Boy. And so he, I guess he gets this question asked in interviews a lot. How can a new guy, how can a new guy break into the business or whatever, but... But it looks like a lot of this is just blah, 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 blah. So I'll just, I'll go on to the meat of it. And I'll just do what I usually do. I'll just uh, comment on all this stuff. Um, well, I guess one, be honest. Yep, I can definitely agree with that. When I say be honest, I mean speak from your heart, yes. Be on, yep, don't be manipulative or condescending in your work. Treat the player how you'd want to be treated. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't make um. Don't make content for the sole purpose of bashing somebody. Saying so, yeah, that that's very bad. Don't. Don't make content that uh is disrespectful to whoever you're, whoever it is you're trying to impress or whoever you're making your content for. You know. Be a douchebag. Um, realize you're making art. Um, yep, yep. I mean, you can look at a whole bunch of games out there and how beautifully detailed they are, and all the lore they put into it, and you know all all the graphics, the detail, um, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You really are. It really is an art form. You know, game design. No, I don't want that one. Game designers are artists and have advantages over non-creative jobs. Think about what they are and exploit them. Yep. Your goal shouldn't be to make tons of money. Um, crazy as this might sound, it's been my philosophy throughout most of my life. It's, it's not, it's not my goal for, to have infinite riches or anything like that, or what I call it, basically the infinite plunge cheat. But just you know, make enough money, make enough money to keep a roof over my head, food in my stomach, you know, and keep my bills paid, and then have a, have a, have a little bit of extra money left over to spend, you know, like, you know, buying more video games or whatnot. Is the same reason why I sh it was my same philosophy when streaming video game or when streaming video games too. I mean, I didn't. I'm into it because I enjoy doing it, not in the hopes that of turning streaming into a big cash cow or I could just make huge, big old chunks of money. No, that's not why I do it. If it were, you would have gone to business school and become a doctor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, or gone into real estate apparently. Apparently, you can make a ton of money uh, playing real estate. 
This is a creative field and should be treated as such first and foremost. Financing your art comes later. Yup. Definitely it right there. Basically, don't give up your day job. Um. Yup, this totally agree with this. If it's not fun, it isn't worth doing. Um, if I was... I'll probably expound on it further later on, but it's, right now isn't a good time. What do you love? What do you hate? Why? All notable filmmakers have a stamp. Something that appears in the work. Yep. These themes will always come to you through to your audience, giving your... <clears throat> Take big risks. Yep. Man, I totally agree with that. Um, I took a big risk when I tried my hand at streaming video games. Because uh, just the cost alone is pretty... It's pretty insane. I probably spent probably spent at least a thousand dollars just for the equipment that I need to stream with. Um, and I probably spent at least another thousand dollars just on uh, just on the two whole banana boxes worth of records that I have. So I took a huge I took a huge risk spending all that money and I threw my records out of order here. Hold on. Nope. Hang on, messed up. One of my records fell out. Hold on. Oops. Well, hopefully it's still playable. Playable for my evening stream. Um, but anyway, like I said, well, like, like I said, I totally agree with this. I mean, I took a huge risk um, streaming video games just on the amount of money I'll plunk. Just on the uh, amount of money I'll plunk down on it. Um, I also took a big risk uh, just presenting myself out there for all the world to see. Because uh, in real life, I'm not that sociable a person. I mean, I find going out and meeting people to be a pretty foreign concept to me it seems too creepy I guess that's I guess it's a word I'm looking for but anyway that but anyway that going moving moving right along and I'm I'm taking and I'm taking a big risk trying to learn how to design a game because throughout all my life I grew up playing them not not making them so when I tried my hand so when I started up my uh, my text based game software for the first time uh, try to create a room I'm like oh, 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 oh you know I had no idea what the hell to do I got overwhelmed but I'm probably going off the subject here basically try to innovate the hell out of anything you make you know follow my footsteps don't follow the herd. Don't do what everybody else does. From how your game plays to how it looks, be unique and you'll stand out. Again, don't don't follow the herd. If tons of people are flocking to Fortnite, that's a game that you should not make then. Fortnite. If everybody and their dog flocks to Mass Effect 4, I'm I'm kind of off the top of my head. I'm guessing there's, I'm guessing there's probably gonna be a fourth Mass Effect coming out. If everybody's flocking to that game, then that's a game that you don't make. So again, don't follow the herd. Push your personal limits. Try new genres, mechanics, and aesthetics. Yes. Experimentation and risk are keys to growing as an artist. And um, 
in my case, I actually have the advantage in this. Uh, game design is just, it's becoming a labor of love for me. It's not something I do for a living. There's actually an advantage in that. Um, I don't have, you know, video games is not my life and livelihood. Game design is not, is not paying my bills. So, therefore, I can't experiment. Now, if our uh, game design was paying my bills, I mean, I probably would have played it safe and just go for the steady income rather than, uh, rather than risk a new game with something totally I, that I think is totally revolutionary, having it go to shit, having my, you know, having a huge black mark on my name, nobody wants to buy my games anymore. Um, you know, and uh, all of a sudden, my uh, profits from video games drops down and I can't pay my bills anymore. You know, I didn't, something like, you know, you get the idea. You know, but see, but, but game design is not paying my bills, though. So, because of that, I can do as much as this as I want. I mean, if I fail, no big deal. I mean, most of it off my back. Just pick myself back up and try again. You said the same thing here. Don't be scared of failure. You have much to lose, and you'll only learn from your mistakes. Um, and there's, um, and there's some quotes about failure that I've read over the months. I can't remember what they were, but they're they're all over the place. Yes, totally agree with this. Don't bite off more than you can chew. And as a brand new game designer, one who's never done it before, I learned that from past experience. Um, or. I guess, I guess, in a sense, um, I had a lot, I had a lot in mind up here, a lot that I really wanted to try to get to put on the paper, to put on the software, but I, you're, there was a big time conflict, this is one of the, re this is one of the reasons why I kind of, I kind of cried uncle last time I tried to, try to design a game, because it just, what I had in my head wasn't translating on the page, so it, I, it was really frustrating trying to trying to figure out where to go and what to do and how to make it work and all that. Just starting out, think small, then think smaller. This is something that I definitely have to work on here. But like I said, uh, keep in mind also that I, I've been playing video games ever since I was a little kid. And I'm 47 years old right now. So basically probably been playing games ever since I've been playing games for 40 years that's basically what it translates to so I've got a lot of a lot of experience a lot of stuff that you know a lot of ideas up here so it, it's a lot that I have to try to get I have to get on the paper if you start on something big you won't finish it and if you do, you'll be burned out and probably won't make another. I agree with, totally agreed with this. The filmmaker never starts his career with a blockbuster movie. Um, I pretty much agree with that too. I don't, I don't really, I don't really follow any lives of any directors or anything like that. But I'll take him at his word on this. One of the easiest mistakes to make starting out is letting ambition drive you down a path you're not ready to travel again. I just, and that's what I said a few moments ago. I got a lot of ideas cooked up, cooking up up here, but it, the difficulty on that is trying to get it, trying to get it on the page. So, slow down, take your time, and start simple. Prototyping is crucial. Yep, but again, this is only going to be. This is only going to be my third attempt to make a game, so I still have yet to. I still have yet to figure out what my prototype is going to be. So I'm, I'm still, I'm basically, I'm basically trying to learn a new language. That's what I'm trying to do here. So, and just like any other language, I mean, you know, you don't, you don't bring in somebody who's first day in English, you don't have them try to read War and Peace. I mean, it doesn't really work that way. So.
practice, make lots of small games. Again, it's probably what I said here a little while ago. Um, it's something that I really have to work on on this. Because, again, lots of stuff up here. I got to I gotta sift through it all. It's like, you know, it's like I'm, it's like I got like 10 banana boxes worth of books and all of a sudden I get a hankering just to read just one of them. Now I got to go through all 10 of my banana boxes just to find that one single book that I want to read. That's basically what I'm going to be going through here. I mean, I got lots of, lots of ideas up here, but now I got to, I got to, I got to like sift through all these ideas I got and I got to, I got to find that one idea that's going to work, so... Lots of small, small ideas quickly. Build on the ones that work. If you look at any successful or fully realized game in the indie scene, you'll notice that it began as a simple prototype. If you get an idea that feels right, simplified. Yep. Strip it to its core element. Okay, uh, he's starting to go over my head here. Destin. Uh-oh. Destin. Okay. Sorry, it looked like my, um, looked like my OBS froze up. Looked like my, um, my stream software froze up. The stronger the glue, the more you can add on the opposite of the glues I'm holding. Okay, so basically what he's saying is, uh, don't try, don't force yourself to do a project that you don't, that you're not into. Yep. Excuse me. Make the games you want to make. Um, yep, totally agree with this. And again, again, I have the advantage in this, is that, um, in that game design is not paying my bills. I work the overnight shift at Walmart. That's the job that's paying my bills, not this. So, because of this, I can experiment. I mean, if I try and fail, no big deal, because, you know, you know, my house and home ain't riding on it. So, I'm, there is no, I have no game to, I have no game design job that I can be fired from. So I can I can't make the ones I want to make and on the other hand, if I actually did have a job as a game designer, in order to keep that job, I'm probably gonna have to play it safe and you know, just go for the steady income and not try to do anything real revolutionary, too risky. So yeah. Go with what moves you. If you're no longer feeling something, put it down and work on what you want. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh, and also, uh, I'm doing this in the morning, kind of, kind of like yesterday. I'm, I'm kind of rush, I'm kind of rushing myself through this. I still have to, I still have to take a shower and lay down and all that. So I gotta, I gotta get ready for the evening stream as well. So. Made quickly and felt passionate about. It. But I think, um, but I think the only, but again, the only way you can really do that, making it quickly and feeling passionate about, I think you had to have been design, designing games for a while now. So you can, that way, so you can just, oh, I got to make this game right now. Get in, sit down. You know, you know, make that game like super quick. Again, this is only going to be my third time trying to make a game. I know next to nothing about game design. So I'm really having a wing it here. So I don't, I mean, I don't even, or you, you kind of get the idea. If things have gone sour and you feel it, Yeah. Stand out. Um, uh, he 
set it up here. I might have set it up here. Yeah, take big risks. But um, that kind of tied in with this. Stand out. Again, don't follow the herd. Yes, he nailed it. He said exactly what I said um, a few entries up, a few entries ago. If you notice a trend in aesthetics or play mechanics, don't do that. That's what I said earlier. If um, if players are flocking in droves to PUBG, don't make that kind of game. I mean, you're nothing more than just another shepherd herding in the flock. That's all you are. Avoid trends, innovate, and break new ground. Stop me. Yes. Stop making goddamn ninja and zombie games. I'm sick of seeing them. Survival horror. They always gotta have zombies in there. No, or either either zombies or. I want to call them. Great unknowns, like psychological thriller types. They don't. They don't have zombies in them. But the you know they got some, some higher consciousness. It, it, I don't have the words for it, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Some kind of unknown abomination making your life a living hell. And if you're making a shooter, don't put it in space. Uh, my advice would be don't make any shooters at all. I mean, they come in they come in damn near all shapes and sizes and none of them interest me the only one that interests me is uh, doom classic and to a lesser extent wolfenstein wolfenstein 3d those are the only two i really care for uh think critically Yes, um, I think thinking critically is a tie-in with be honest. you got to be critical about yourself. Um, as kind of a corollary to this. Um, might be a little extreme, but uh, Dave, um, David Goggins, he's an ultra-marathon runner. Um, he, once, he once said, he once kind of took this to the extreme. He, he basically said, do it. If you're, if you think you, it's okay to call yourself a fat fuck, if that's what you are. Do you, are you grossly overweight? It's all right. It's okay to call your, call yourself a disgusting pig. If you sit there, if all you do is sit at home and <laughs> pig out on food, do it. You got to be real with yourself, man. You got to be upfront and honest with yourself. If you think you, if you think you're a fucking ugly guy, say it. You know, tell it to yourself. You know that kind of thing. I mean, like I said, it's kind of extreme, but it does, it does tie in pretty well with what they're saying here. Ninety-nine percent of game design is critical thinking. I mean, I mean, I learned that. That was definitely a lesson I learned the hard way the, the first two times I tried my hand at game design. You know, again, I got ideas up here that I'm trying to translate. Get, I'm trying to get on the page, but it's not translating right. Something's going wrong with it, so it, it's just what he said here. 99% of game design is critical thinking. Try to find holes in your designs. If you can't pull them, move on to something else before you set out to work on your project. Interesting idea here. Before you set out to work on your project, you should have already given plenty of thought how it might not work. This is probably something else I need to work on too. You know, again, I just, I just charge right on in there. Yay! I want to get one. Make me a game in less than one session. I want to make me a game in one session. Not even thinking about the things that can go wrong with it. So, so I definitely agree with that.
I guess another way of looking at this, start asking how these core elements could be exploited and how might things come back to haunt you in the future. Uh, maybe consider the hacking community when you make a game. Consider the speedrunning community when you make a game. I mean, the last thing you'd want is all. Uh, if you ever watch any of them speedrun shows like uh, AGDQ or ESA, the last thing you'd want a speedrunner to do is, uh, okay, three, two, one, go. Okay, be ready with time. I'm just going to click this wall here and tink, time. You know, you don't want any, you don't want that to happen in any of your games. That is just pure embarrassment. Like if some, if you have like a serious gaping hole in your game, that a speedrun, that a speedrunner can complete it just like that. That's a, a tragic flaw right there. Thinking critically is the key to avoid later conflict. Always look before you leap. Take a step back from your project. Consider it the same way you would someone else's work if you hadn't made it. Um, if you hadn't made it, what would you see as strengths and weaknesses? I think there was a line in um, one of those uh, Star Wars movies. Um, so Padme, I think her name is. Uh, the one played by um, I don't know her name, but she, she, I think she's like a, she's an actress, a psychology major or something. It ain't Nicole Kidman, but that's the name I got stuck in my head right now. But she said something like. Mentors have a way of knowing you better than you know yourself or something like that, but that I kind of see what he's saying here Sometimes uh getting opinions from other players players can actually help you out Play games no problems there like I said uh, I've been playing games ever since I was a little kid I'm, I'm, I'm 47 years old right now, so basically that means I've been playing games for 40 years no problems there. Um, I guess. I guess one little quirk that I have now is uh, I also stream games, so this is a uh, this kind of puts me in a in a bad spot right here because my viewers, just like myself, they've never designed a game in their lives. So my my big fear on that is if uh, if they see me design. They see me designing games. They might, oh, I ain't checking this guy out. Pew, off they go, which I'm gonna have a feeling pretty terrible about. But what they don't realize is, I'm just as new to game design as they are. So, but this is something I really want to do. Not something, not something I want to make a career out of. At least not, not at the moment. But right now, it's becoming a labor of love for me. Expect to learn anything if you aren't playing what's out. Now, as far as following, playing the latest games, no. Um, latest games, they, of the very few that I've looked at, for the most part, whew, they go over my head. But yeah, you can't expect to learn anything if you aren't playing what's out. Um, and I'm, from what little I've researched on it, a lot of these big companies. These big video game companies, they don't play video games either. All they're caring about is just making the money and the people on the lower end of the total pole, they're the ones responsible for making them all. Probably says, oh yeah, that's their department, not mine. I'm just here to keep the you know, I'm just here to keep the company afloat or something like that. I mean I've I go through I've worked at a lot of jobs that were like that. Um many of the managers that I've worked for have never done what I did, or have never done what I do, or you know, back uh, back in the late '80s when I was bagging groceries. Many of the managers I worked for, they've never bagged a single grocery in their life. They just somehow, somehow started off as a manager and whoosh, up you went. And the, uh, in which uh, those managers there ended up being the big, ended up being some pretty big douchebags too. But um, the few manager, the managers that I've worked for that were cool as hell actually did start out where I started off. They too started off bagging groceries and they moved up and up and up and up.
But I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. But you get the idea. Even if they suck, games that's... Even if they suck, games that sell well in the mainstream do it for a reason. Pick them apart and find out why. If you don't play them, you won't know what not to do when you make your own. Again, I said this earlier. Um, I mean, they're hell, hell, I even know all. I know of one store manager. I know of a store manager that's never held a box cutter in his life. When I, back when I worked as, at this one grocery store I used to work at, I've had a, I had this one manager. He did, didn't know how to use a box cutter. He was basically grandfathered into that position because uh, I think one of his brothers was a district manager. That was the only reason why he got that store. Uh, I, I'll i take him at his word on this. Again, I'm extremely new to game design, although I do get what he means here. Basically, just try to reverse engineer any games you come across. Whereas I'm I have, like, no background in that. I mean, I can tell you... I mean, I can tell you what I like and don't like. I mean, I can do that coming from a from a game player. But as far as, like, level design and stuff like... As far as, like, from a game design perspective... I mean, couldn't help you there. Well, again, no problems there. Doing that for 40 years. But I guess um, I can agree with this coming as, as a game player myself, but from a game design, whew, over my head. Um, Grow up. No problems there. As I said earlier, I'm 47 years old. I'm hurtling towards 50. So I'm already pretty well grown up. Yes. When you're an indie, you don't have to answer to anyone. It's the same thing. I, you know, it was the same thing I said earlier. I mean, I, I don't design games for a living. I work a job at Walmart, so Walmart's paying my bills, not game design. So I ain't got to worry about a game design boss telling me that this is a bad game. I need to redo it, or I need to make another Fortnite game, or anything like that. Stop designing games like you have to pass the, <laughs> pass the SRB. I'm not saying everyone should make porn games, but why do all video games seem to have immature themes? Totally agreed. People aren't stupid. Stop treating them like they are. Yup. Speak through your work like you would to your friends. Design for yourself and don't censor your ideas. Yup. Or at least... As far as censoring your ideas goes, at the very least, or at, at least be considerate of who you're, be considerate of other people. I mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go out of your way to offend people, but just, you know, just, think I had, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the words for it, so I'll just move along. Um, this is going to be very difficult for me. Now, because, I mean, what, once in a very great while, I'll, like, go down to the bowling alley and play some pinball or something. But, uh, uh back at, uh, I think back, back in the day, I used to take a three to five mile hike, like, once a week, but that ended up ruining my feet. And, uh, I already, I work a job where I already do a lot of walking. So, but again, I'm I'm mostly an indoorsy person. I'm not a very outdoorsy kind of guy. So the I mean, to me, the great outdoors would be something like Google. One way of looking at it. 
can also be very inspiring. Go take an adventure and then come home and write a game about it. Um, I read a little bit of the behind the scenes on a game called Papers, Please. It's where um, you're an immigration officer and you have to check everybody's passports and whatnot and make sure they're they're correct. But you're but uh, that game there was uh, based on a was based on a guy's experiences. He's like an international something, but so he he goes through the uh, he goes through the passport Olympics a lot. So he figured, why not make a game out of it? And that's what he did. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, again, this is going to be, uh, again, I get what he's saying, but I'm, again, I'm not a, I'm not an outdoorsman. I'm mostly an indoorsy, you know, video games, pinball and all that, but I do get what he means though. You need to have some kind of life outside of video games and computers. Whereas, um, you know, whereas mine's, uh, mine's pinball. Um, I read, watch movies, uh, listen to music, very, basically various other types of media, but, but yeah, um, and as a, it seems I've gone a little over long with this video, <laughs> and I had, I wasn't expecting 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24 pointers on here. I hadn't expected this many. Um, like I said at the start of this video, I only got maybe like down to the first first four or five here and I came to the realization that I need to make a video on this. So, so I came back after work and this is what I did. But I hadn't expected this many pointers. So, um... I believe I've probably said enough to at least get my point across. So, I'll just go ahead and kill it here. Like I said, I still got to hop in the shower. I still have to I still have to get my evening stream all set up and everything. So, so until then, until next time. Thanks for watching everybody.